Welcome to another video of Controllers Tech. In the past I have covered few ways to handle the incoming data from the UART, like the circular buffer, or the ring buffer. Even the methods were very effective, there was always some issue with different microcontrollers. It happened because there were some registers involved, and they change with different series of the MCU. So today we will be looking at yet another method, which is not only easier to set up, but completely based on the hull. So the same method will remain universal for all SDM32 devices. Cortex-M7 processors needs a little changes due to memory restrictions, and I will show them in the end. So without wasting any more time, let's start with Cube IDE. I am using F446RE. I will do my usual clock setup first. Now let's enable the UART2 for the demonstration. Leave everything to default here. Go to DMA, and add a receiver request. Make sure the mode is normal, because this process will not work with the circular DMA. Data width is bytes, as we transfer characters via the UART. Direction is peripheral to memory. Now go to NVIC, and enable the global interrupt for the UART. This is it for the setup. Let's start the program. I am going to use two buffers, and these are their sizes, in bytes of course. Create the buffers now. Rx buffer is where the DMA is going to copy the data, and the main buffer is where the data will be finally stored. Now in the main function, we will call the uartReceive function. The data will be stored in the Rx buffer, and the size of data is the size of Rx buffer. This function receive idle to DMA, note that it's uartEx. Here it's mentioned, that it will receive data till, either the data is completely received, or an idle event occurs. Idle event means when there is no incoming data for some amount of time. In that case, it will trigger the interrupt. The callback we are going to use, is the Rx event callback. Here the event can be anything, it could be idle event, or the complete event, but that's ok and we will handle the data in the same way for both of them. Inside the callback, we will check if the callback is called by the UART2. I am putting this check so that you can use multiple UARTs in the same function, just make sure to check which UART called it. This could be UART also, it depends on if you are using USART, or UART. If the data is incoming in the UART2, we will just copy the data to the main buffer. Now after the callback, the DMA will stop, and we must start it again. The hull sets all the interrupts for the DMA by default, and we will disable the half transfer complete interrupt. This interrupt triggers when half the data has been transferred, and we don't need it here. So this is it, let's build it now. Seems like I forgot to include the string file. Build it again, and now we will debug. I have added the buffers in the live expression. Let's put a breakpoint here to understand the process. I will send 1, 2, 3, 4 first. We hit the breakpoint. 
Even though the receive size was set to 10, the interrupt gets triggered with just 4 values. This is because the line was idle after those 4 values, and that's what set the interrupt, the idle line. Another interesting thing to note here is the value of the size variable. It's same as the number of characters we sent. So whenever the idle line triggers the interrupt, we will know how many characters actually got stored in the buffer. Now we will do the mem copy, and copy the content in the main buffer. This time I will send a single character. You can see the value of the size, it is 1. Here it starts writing in the Rx buffer from the beginning again. And that's why we need a second buffer, where we can store the data in the proper order. Not like this, of course we will modify this code. But before that, let's see what happens if I try to send data greater than the Rx buffer size. These are obviously more than 10 characters. This time the size is 10, so the remaining data is pretty much lost. To avoid this, use the larger size for the Rx buffer, but not very large, I will demonstrate this in a while. Let's modify this code, so that it can handle the incoming data in a proper manner. Here it is, a big solution. Let me explain what's happening here. We need to keep track of the current position in the main buffer. Now let's assume we got some data. If the current position plus data size exceeds the buffer size, then we need to overlap from the start of the buffer. For example, if the buffer size is 20, and our current position is 15. Now if we get 8 bytes of new data, the new position should be 23, which is exceeding the buffer size. Here we will first find how many bytes are remaining in the buffer, which in our case are 5. We will copy these 5 bytes of data. Now we have reached the end of the buffer, so we will start from the beginning. Update the position to 0, and copy the remaining bytes which in this case are 3. And finally we will update the position according to the current position. In another scenario, if the position plus the data does not exceed the buffer, we will simply copy the data into the main buffer, and update the current position. I have also included a test check function. This can be used for quickly checking for a particular string in the incoming data. Keep this very small as it might disturb the receiving. Let's build and run this. Let's see the working now. Since we have added a lot of stuff, this time things will be different here. We have the 1, 2, 3, 4 in the main buffer. Now the P is saved in the next position. Keep checking the values of the old position, and the new position. Now the new data is saved in the proper order, and the positions are also updating as per the changes. Now if I send this data, Let's see what happens. Here the data is written till the end of the buffer, and then it started from the beginning again. It's overlapping the old data. Let's see if this particular search thing works or not. I will just send some random data, and put OK in the middle of it. Notice this variable, this should set to 1 if the OK is found. You can see it's 1, since it found that OK in the middle of the data. You can use this to check for the strings, but not the large ones. 
you can implement the functions from ring buffer code here, and they will work alright. You might need to modify them a little. I will do that and update the code in few days. Keep checking the GitHub. The program works fine for small data, but how effective is it if the large data arrives in the UART? Let's test it. I am going to send a huge buffer, so let's modify these size. Rx buffer can accept 512 bytes at once, and the main buffer is 2 kilobytes. Here is the data I am going to send. This is a text file, which is 1.42 kilobytes, 1459 bytes to be exact. Let's see if it can receive the file. Keep an eye on the position variable. Let's send the file now. The new position is 1459, which was the size of the file. This means the entire file has been received. We can cross-check the data. Here the file starts with this sentence. And that's exactly we have in the beginning of the buffer. The data is ending at 1459, so let's check that part. This is the end of the file. Here we have the same sentence in the end too. So even the Rx buffer was set to receive 512 bytes, the entire data was received successfully. This is because the transfers take place in chunks, and we can receive one chunk of data, process it and get ready to receive the next chunk. There is enough time in between two chunks, so that we can process this data. So the things works just fine, and we are able to receive the receive unknown length data from the UART. Soon I will make a video about file transfer using the UART, where we can save the file in the SD card, or the USB, by using the UART and SDM32. This is it for the video. The next part will focus on the Cortex-M7 series MCU. In the Cortex-M7 series, we need to make few changes in our memory location. I am using the H745, and I have the same code here, that I used in F446. I would recommend that you watch my previous video on memory management first, the link is in the description. If we see the memory details, here the Rx buffer is at the location 2.4 million AC. Like I mentioned in the previous video also, that in my case, this location is in the Axi RAM, so no issues for me as the DMA do have the access to this RAM. But in some cases, this location will be in the DTCM RAM, and there you have the issue, as the DMA can't access it. So if you have the controller, whose main RAM is DTCM, I would suggest that you move the buffer to some other location, like SRAM 1, or 2. It's explained in that memory management video, so watch it. I have it in the SRAM, so I will go ahead with the next step. Go to the Cube MX, and the Cortex M7 tab. Here we will modify the MPU configuration. Just follow it for this video, I will surely make another video to explain it in the details. Select this background region privileged access, and MPU disabled during hard fault. Now enable the memory region. Enter the address of the Rx buffer. Keep in mind that there is some alignment parameter also. So if it doesn't work for you, put the buffer at the start of any SRAM, and then try with that address. I will explain about MPU region, size and all other things in few other videos. 
Next we have to choose the region size, and since the Rx buffer is set to receive 512 bytes, we will choose 512 bytes or more here. In the access permission, select all access permitted. And disable all the permissions. So this region is not cacheable, not shareable, or bufferable. That's all, let's test it now. I will send the same file again. It received the file successfully. The size is also exact. We can cross check the data in the beginning and end of the file. Now if we send the file again, the main buffer will be overlapped. You might be wondering how the main buffer is able to work here, since we haven't configured it in the MPU. Well that's because we are performing mem copy, while copying data between our X buffer and main buffer. And like I mentioned in the previous video, the CPU have access to all the RAMs, so it can freely copy the data around. The DMA was the problem, and since the DMA is copying the data from the peripheral into the Rx buffer, we need to modify the region for the Rx buffer. Let me quickly show you what happens if we don't configure the MPU. I will set a breakpoint in the callback function. So we did hit the breakpoint, means the interrupt is working just fine. But if we see the Rx buffer, there is nothing in it. This means that the data did arrive in the UART data register, but it didn't got copied in the Rx buffer. This happens due to the cacheable region, and we will discuss it in another video. If we send the data again, the interrupt is working, the positions are updating, but there is nothing in the Rx buffer. So properly configure the MPU to avoid this. This is it for this video. I hope you understood the topic. Like I mentioned in the beginning, this setup does not require particular registers to deal with, so you can use it in any STM32 device, if it supports idle line interrupt. I will try to add few more functions to this, so it can be used it with the ESP, or the GSM GPS modules. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.